കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം ഈദ Namaste and welcome to the next episode of Drig Drishya Viveka. So today we're going to do text 16 and 17. And the subtext of these verses is who attains enlightenment. Text 16. Sakshina purato bhati lingam dehena samyutam. ചിത്തിച്ഛായ സമാവേശാജ് ജീവസ്യാദ്യവാഹാർക ദ സബൽ ബോഡി ലിംഗം വിച്ച് എക്സിസ്റ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ക്ലോസ് പ്രോക്സിമിറ്റി ടു ദ വിറ്റ്നസ് സാക്ഷിൻ ഐഡന്റിഫൈങ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് വിത്ത് ദ ഗ്രോസ് ബോഡി ബിക്കംസ് ദി എംബോഡിഡ് എംപീരിക്കൽ സെൽഫ് ഓൺ അക്കൗണ്ട് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ബീയിങ് അഫക്റ്റഡ് ബൈ ദ റിഫ്ലക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് കോൺഷ്യസ്നെസ് Text 17. Asya jiva twangaro pat sakshin yava bhasate avratau tu vinashtayam bhede bhate payati tat. The character of an embodied self appears through false superimposition in the sakshin also. With the disappearance of the veiling power the distinction between the seer and the object becomes clear and with it the jiva character of the sakshin witness disappears well these are wonderful verses because they give in two verses the mechanism for both unenlightenment and enlightenment huh So then the the question arises after hearing these verses and you should look at the commentary too in the video description the doubt is then if the witness is always enlightened and if the subtle body the lingam is never enlightened in fact is not even sentient it only appears to be sentient because of its association with the witness then who gets enlightened and of course the answer is nobody <laughs> nobody gets enlightened but the covering of enlightenment is removed the covering is the false identification between the mind intelligence ego with the body on one side and with the witness on the other side so this is the problem it's not that the body is a problem or the mind or even the ego the problem is the false identification so this has to be removed this verse has the word in it again chichchaya chit is unconditioned consciousness and chaya means reflection so the reflection of unconditioned consciousness in the mind is falsely identified as real consciousness and this is the problem actually when we talk about chit we should use the word awareness because there's a difference between chit and chittam chittam is the false consciousness consciousness that has an object and of course the objects are all maya <laughs> they don't really exist that's the meaning of the word maya huh? ma means not and ya means which is so <laughs> that which is not really doesn't exist all these phenomena because they change are unreal now i want to read a sutta from the buddha and this sutta it's a little bit long so please have patience this sutta is so powerful that 
the first people who heard it all became enlightened on the spot. So this is a very, very incredibly powerful sutta. And it's called the Anatta Lakana Sutta, the discourse on the not-self. So this was one of the first, or maybe the first, of Buddha's discourses during which the listeners became enlightened. I have heard that on one occasion, the Blessed One was staying near Varanasi in the deer park at Isipatana. There he addressed the group of five monks. Form, monks, is not self. If form were the self, this form would not lend itself to dis-ease. It would be possible to say with regard to form, let my form be thus, and let my form not be thus. But precisely because form is not self, this form lends itself to dis-ease. And it is not possible to say with regard to form, let my form be thus, let my form not be thus. Feeling is not self. Perception is not self. Fabrications are not self. Consciousness is not self. If consciousness were the self, this consciousness would not lend itself to dis-ease. It would be possible to say with regard to consciousness, let my consciousness be thus. Let my consciousness not be thus. But precisely because consciousness is not self, consciousness lends itself to dis-ease. And it is not possible to say with regard to consciousness, let my consciousness be thus. Let my consciousness not be thus. What do you think, monks? Is form constant or inconstant? Inconstant, Lord. And is that which is inconstant easeful or stressful? Stressful, Lord. And is it fitting to regard what is inconstant, stressful, subject to change as this is mine, this is myself, this is what I am? No, Lord. Is feeling constant or inconstant? Inconstant, Lord. Is perception constant or inconstant? Inconstant, Lord. Are fabrications constant or inconstant? Inconstant, Lord. What do you think, monks? Is consciousness constant or inconstant? Inconstant, Lord. And is that which is inconstant easeful or stressful? Stressful, Lord. And is it fitting to regard what is inconstant, stressful, subject to change as this is mine, this is myself, this is what I am? No, Lord. Thus, monks, any form whatsoever that is past, future, or present, internal or external, blatant or subtle, common or sublime, far or near, Every form is to be seen with right discernment as it has come to be. This is not mine. This is not myself. This is not what I am. Any feeling whatsoever, any perception whatsoever, any fabrications whatsoever, any consciousness whatsoever that is past, future, or present, internal or external, blatant or subtle, common or sublime, far or near, every consciousness is to be seen with right discernment as it has come to be. This is not mine. This is not myself. This is not what I am. Seeing thus, the instructed disciple of the noble ones grows disenchanted with form, disenchanted with feeling, disenchanted with perception, disenchanted with fabrications, disenchanted with consciousness. Disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, he is released. With release, there is the knowledge released. He discerns that birth is ended, the holy life fulfilled, the task done. There is nothing further for this world. 
That is what the Blessed One said. Gratified, the group of five monks delighted in the Blessed One's words. And while this explanation was being given, the minds of the group of five monks, through lack of clinging sustenance, were released from the effluence. Ooh-wee! So you see, this cuts to the very core of this essence of discrimination, viveka. Drig drishya viveka. The discrimination between the seer and the seen. The body is seen. The senses are seen. Perception is seen. Mind is seen. Ego is seen. Even consciousness is seen. It's like a movie playing on a screen before the self. So if this is realized, if we can make it not just knowledge, not just about words, but an actual experience, that's the end of suffering. That's the end of all attachment, the end of identification. This is not me. This is not myself. This is not who I am. The beauty, the Buddha expresses it so beautifully <laughs> that we cannot but stand in awe at his penetrating understanding of the situation and see that actually the Vedic conclusion and the Buddha's conclusion are one and the same. Drig drishya vivekaha. This is a big deal. Because the Buddhists for many years, over a thousand years actually, have been trying their best to divorce themselves from the Vedic path. But among the Buddhists, the best teacher that I could find was Bhikkhu Jnanananda. And he personally said to me directly, I heard it with my own ears, if the sutras, the Buddha sutras, say anything that contradicts the Upanishads, it's likely they have been interpolated. In other words, changed between the time it was spoken by the Buddha and the present. Because there was a huge reform, or not reform, actually corruption, <laughs> of the uh, Theravada Buddhist lineage about 1, 1,200 years ago when Buddhism became mixed up with politics. And so, as usual, the politics corrupted the Buddha's teaching. And it actually led to a creation of a counterfeit teaching in which the knowledge, the words, were held as the means to uh, carrying on the lineage, passing on the lineage from generation to generation. And the practices were deemed non-essential. Now, in one sense, you can see that point of view that if someone receives these words accurately and then practices based on them, they will certainly get the result. But what actually happened was that the monks who specialized in the practice were sidelined. They were disenfranchised. And the big, big chief monks in charge of everything became the scholars, the ones in, in, the, in charge of the words. So the word has replaced the experience. And this has propagated even to Hindu or Indian culture now, where there are many teachers, but they're teaching only the words and not the experience, not the practice. So we want to go beyond that. We want to get the actual experience of these words and realize for ourselves the difference between the perceiver and the perceived. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum.